there are two types of people. There are people that do things, and then there are people that try to stop people from doing things. And we were out there, we were people that were doing things. My name is Lorraine and when I graduated from UC and I uh, was done with school, I decided I had to do something else. I wanted to start a project with uh, random people and more importantly, I wanted to start a project that would be um, less um, pompous than other projects that I would see around the city of Cincinnati. She mentioned this project to me about bringing a couple people she knew from grad school. Grad school, that's it. <laughs> At first, I was pretty excited about it, and uh, I liked the idea. Uh, that's how Museum Gallery started. Um, but then I met the group of people we were going to do it with, and uh, first impression, the two red-headed, bearded, facial hair guys really creeped me out, both of them. I have always been a very, very, very staunch supporter of museums and galleries, and so I am involved in the sense that I like museums and galleries. I more or less single-handedly ran the whole gallery for the entire duration of its existence. Uh, it took forever to choose a title for the gallery. We ended up with the museum gallery, gallery museum, museum, museum gallery, museum gallery, with the museum museum. Absurd and uh, very dada, obviously. So first we looked for a space and um, found that space that was really nice. Uh, very interesting, lots of niches and, and stairs and all kind of like nice little areas. When we first came together, it was sort of this project space. Which was a scary building and a scary place, and there was that homeless person living in the doorway outside. Um, we uh, came up with a really kind of a different way to do galleries. Uh, we were trying to mix it up. We were trying to push some buttons, uh, raise some, some questions, make people start to think about their own paradigms. A gallery in which there were no hierarchies of good or bad. And so I always thought of museum gallery as a place where anybody could show whatever they wanted and any kind of show could happen there. You know, it's like we put a gallery in front of a mirror. It became a bit, uh, how would you say it? Um, what am I thinking here? You know, where brothers and sisters have sex with each other. But that's what it was, you know? That's what we came to do. I think we were like like a very narcissistic gallery. It definitely seemed like you guys were, I hate to use a phrase, not take yourself seriously, but I, I think in a way you're trying not to take art too seriously, and I kind of appreciated that. You guys not taking art seriously didn't mean you didn't put a lot of serious effort into it. Maybe that's why people hated it so much, because, you know, we wanted to have the best shows possible, so we had ourselves do the work, you know. After our first show, uh, the gallery became pretty successful. We had um, um, shows every month. It was going crazy. People were coming every month. It started off pretty well. We got rolling. Um, it felt pretty good. And things were going pretty nice for us. We had a lot of people. We were sort of the new gallery in town. People were coming out. One of the most interesting parts of it was watching the people. Um, getting to work with the people in the gallery and then watching the people come in because there was like a, a pattern you know when it opened at 7 p.m. you'd have the old people come in first and they were like serious and they would like go around
around and look at each piece of art and, you know, put their hands on their face like that. And then as the night progressed, it just went slowly downhill. And it usually peaked at like 8.30 or 9 when all the cool people were there. But then around closing time, it got like really creepy and bumps started coming in. And I just wanted to go home. People were coming out, having sex in the bathrooms. It was insane. I can't even really tell you about all the stories I have from it. One of, one of the funnest times at the gallery was definitely when that orange blob um, started running across the street and made its way into CS13 across the street. There have been shows where I just had no idea what was going on. All the young kids just wanted to come drink in our gallery, which was kind of cool, but also kind of annoying. Well, you know, I think a lot of the times the best things at art shows are the beers. Um, if there's a reason why we had any success, I think maybe it had a whole lot to do with the kind of delicious hors d'oeuvres that we would have there. Everything was going well, uh, except for a few people who hated it, but actually we really liked that, so it didn't matter. And we, we didn't seem to make friends with very many people, you know? <laughs> Those guys made fun of me because I was trying to sell my clothing line. It's cold. Reed got in a fight with a homeless guy. You know, I, I think that there's just some people out there that, that just don't understand. They just don't understand what we were trying to do. Yeah, people seem to hate us. I don't know if that's, uh, if it's like a... They're drinking too much Haterade or, you know, they just really just disliked us because I think the whole part of everything was just to make it fun, to make the whole gallery experience fun. I mean, it's questionable if we actually achieve that, but I think it's definitely obvious that we worked really hard to try to do that. How do I feel about people who said I was casting my net too wide? Whoever said that is, is just being pompous. I mean, I guess, yeah, I would respond with, well, I don't understand how, what you're supposed to do with that net if you're not supposed to try to catch a bunch of things. Our shows were all concise, and even though they exemplified multiple voices. A show that I curated that I really liked um, was a show called The Romance Show. And I think that was one of my favorite ones, just because I felt like that was a broad enough idea that, you know, you could sort of involve all sorts of different types of people. I mean, like, it, I liked that I could involve my artist friend and his spouse, who was not an artist at all. The hatred we received, man, I, I, uh, I think we loved it. Uh, there was at least one time when I came to a planning meeting and we were kind of discussing the strategy for the year out. Um, and then we talked a lot about how to sustain the gallery, um, which, you know, when we were starting out, that was a big worry. Uh, we didn't have any way of keeping the gallery going back when it was on Sycamore Street uh, until we finally hit the mine underneath. And at that point, the, there was the idea that, you know, it's possible since we found the, this entire set of caverns underneath the Sycamore Gallery, that we could have a team of people go down there and extract something usable from it that would help fund the rest of the shows. We set up kind of an expeditionary force. To be honest, I never heard from them again, so I don't really know if anything came out of that. So one of the main issues the gallery was our basement. Um, there was some really crazy shit going on down there. I didn't ever go down there alone. I was too afraid. The basement was really, really scary. I remember hearing this noise. Also flickering lights. I was looking for something. Out of nowhere comes his hand and just punches me right in the face. That's creepy as fuck. The intense smell of urine. I caught a flesh-eating um, bacteria. I think it was from peeing in the basement. Um, I heard some people disappeared there. Uh, from what I heard, Amanda. Never came back from a trip to the basement. One time I was down there and I was looking, I was looking for some equipment we put, we stored down there. And uh, I look over and there's a, a redheaded man in his underwear. I saw Reed and behind Reed was this kind of goat-legged she-beast thing with devil horns. Some sort of intercourse was happening. I think it was the time that um, Chris Reeves walked into the basement 
of the, of the old space um, while I was um, having group sex with uh, Lorraine and Susie. Uh, well, I can firmly say that it was not sexual. Um, Honestly, I didn't have, have a single clue what was going on. Everything was going well until the fire. Yes, we had a really bad fire and it was all Ed's fault. Thank you, Ed. Uh, for, for that show, I was in that um, smaller closety area uh, and I shipped in about 12 or 13 televisions and I had them on this big, really unsafe uh, wooden shelving unit that I just kind of nailed together. At one point, it smelled like something was burning, and so uh, Lorraine approached me and asked uh, if I could check and make sure nothing was on fire, and I found some way to convince her that I was certain there wasn't anything on fire. I'm pretty sure I set the building on fire that day. And I felt really guilty about that for a long time. After the fire, there was nothing left. All the art was gone, we had nothing left, so we had no choice but to move. But we didn't have much money, so we looked for options that would be really cheap. We heard of this, this mass suicide uh, in Brighton a long time ago in these buildings that were still vacant. These places were totally abandoned for years, and we came across it, it was really cheap. Uh, when we went in, there was actually zero floors. You know, what I heard about the new place was that it did not have a floor. And so when I remember going to look at the new place and seeing that it didn't have a floor and thinking, how is this going to be the new place? And then I thought, what a wonderful angle for the gallery. A floorless gallery, I think, is something that Cincinnati sorely needed. That's stupid. Now I don't like the smell of the new <laughs> space. And that was really bad. I remember everybody just being sick of it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what they're thinking. After the move, things started to go a little bit downhill. Rumors were pulling us apart. We were hearing things about each other. I don't know, it was really strange, but um, as the rumors were catching on, I think people started coming less and less to the gallery. Uh, people were a little scared of us. The worst part of it is that we ended up losing our secret funding from our secret philanthropist who used to give us a little bit of money to run this gallery but uh, pulled the plug out because they heard that we had said really bad things about them, which is not true. Why is it closing? Uh, so I sort of assumed that that was the uh, financial obligations were becoming too much for the gallery to uh, be sustainable. Uh, I heard it's because of the cats. Is what I heard. I don't know because Cincinnati is depressing. Is it the space? Is it the people? Is there some kind of conspiracy? Is that you know like do, are we run over with rodents in the gallery? Like you know God only knows. Is it money? Is it two people fighting over something all the time? Is it over a coat rack? I don't know. Oh, look, the coat rack thing is horrible. Like I, I built a coat rack because people need a place to put the coats when they come into uh, to a gallery. So you know, if you're walking around, you don't, you don't want to look at art in a coat. You want to take your coat off and you want to be comfortable. And uh, I built a coat rack, and Susie did not, and actually almost everyone did not like the coat rack, and so um, it got deinstalled. Some people want floors, some people don't want floors. I did not want a floor. Everybody else said we need to have a solid foundation to stand on. I said you guys just are part of the establishment then. We actually wound up, I think, institutionalizing ourselves, maybe. So it became harder to be like anti-institution when you're kind of an institution. It made, started to make me think more about cure curating as an art form, the way in which I think about arranging works or the way that works can complement one another as opposed to simply hanging on a white wall, uh, the way that there can be um, blurry lines between um, artist and curator as opposed to mechanical or editing process. You know, we had a good run, lasted three years, you know, we might pop up here and there in the future. I'm really proud of everybody for actually sticking together despite the numerous, numerous times in which we did hate each other. 
Like sometimes we got along great, other times we um, screamed at each other. I'm so happy that it is closing. This has been probably one of the worst experiences of my life. I think I'll be happy when I can forget all about it. I have mixed feelings about it. Because it was fun to be a part of, but it was also a pain in the ass to be a part of. I'm sad, but I'm not there anymore, so you know, I can understand why you want to close it, because it is a lot of work. I kind of could have cared less what the gallery was doing. I had to start distancing myself uh, for political, political purposes. I'm sad because uh, that was a big part of my life and now uh, I'm kind of bored. I'm Chris Reeves. I have a master's degree in art history. I have exhibited artwork internationally and I'm currently unemployed.